Okay, y'all, I have a bonus thing that I do at the end sometimes in my spaghetti. It's not part of the recipe, so I will let you know that at the very end of the video. If you have elk or bear or deer or, I mean, you know, venison or pork, turkey, chicken, use it. close to getting these people fed before bedtime. So I've pulled out the Instant Pot. This is a six quart Instant Pot. And I am going to make spaghetti. I have made this method slash recipe many times in here uh, as I'm learning to use the Instant Pot. I've had it for a while, but I was intimidated by it. Maybe you have been too. This, but I got on Markdown at um, the grocery store today, I got a pound, 1.11 pounds of um, a ground beef for uh, $5.40, $5.40. And the other day I got this Dreamfields pasta at an Amish bent and dent markdown store for a dollar. Uh, this is a low carb option. Um, we like this option. I'm only using it tonight because that's what I'm using. But you can, by the way, use any pasta that you want, gluten-free or, or you know, the vegetable pastas. I like that too. But this is the Dreamfields. Actually, this is linguine, but that doesn't matter. We're still calling it spaghetti. Um, and I'll use part of this box. One jar of any kind of pasta sauce, your favorite, whether it has meat or vegetables or whatever you want in it. Um, you could also use homemade, but you want 24 ounces. I like to choose one that sugar is not one of the first five ingredients. So basically we're having kind of a low carb spaghetti since we're using a lower carb pasta sauce and a lower carb pasta tonight. So, um, so this would be a good one. And then instead of water, I'm using broth, but when I write the recipe for you, I'm going to say water. But I have this broth, needs to be used up. It's really good and healthy homemade broth, so I'm gonna use that. And then I've got spices. So I thought it best if you could see into the pot. So we'll see if we can work together on this. You can see and I can work. I'm going to turn this on saute. I am going to put the meat in here. Like I said, this is one pound, 11 ounces. Now, I've told y'all over and over I want you to learn to cook without a recipe. And what that means is, you know, if this recipe calls for one pound of ground beef and you have 1.11, then use it. Oh, I didn't put my oil in there. I'm not gonna worry about it. This is 80-20 meat, so it'll form its own grease. Um, then use it. And I'm gonna just go ahead and add my salt and pepper, and I'm gonna go ahead and add my other spices. So let's talk about that a sec. Look at that. <laughs> that is my pepper mill that I got at a thrift store. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some, I love this thing. It's like when you go to the Italian restaurants like Olive Garden, they say, would you like pepper in your salad or on your pasta? Sure do. So I'm just gonna put some pepper. Now, I am going to write this recipe and it is going to be on my website for you. I will have measurements on there, but this is how I cook. I don't use measurements. Now, if you're new to this channel, this is the first time you've clicked on this channel, I am Miss Katie, and this is where I like to share cozy homemaking with old-fashioned family values. I love to share everything homemaking, and that, for me, my passion is cooking and um, baking, food preservation, canning, dehydrating, a little bit of fermenting, a little some sourdough, um, just all kinds of kitchen delights. And um, I do share things on um, ideas of how to use raw dairy, raw cow's milk. But also uh, here at Heritage Ways, I am passionate about all things home. So you might see information about homeschooling, whether you're homeschooling your children or grandchildren or other children. 
um, you might see information on natural health or chickens or gardening because you know maybe we're considered a small town or village homesteaders I don't know but to me it's just all homemaking and I try to make it as cozy as I can for my family and of course incorporate old-fashioned family values so I would encourage you to visit me um, here subscribe if you haven't already or visit on uh, Instagram or my website that's where I share um, all kinds of um, things. I sell my aprons, the two cookbooks I've written, and so forth. I've got my well-loved canning apron on today because that's what I'm doing over here. I'm canning my friend Jerry in Missouri, who happens to be a patron of ours. So, hey, Jerry. Uh, she made this for me. And you can see by the stains, it's not dirty, it's stained because I have well-loved this apron that she made me. Oh, probably three years ago, I guess. Or four. So the next step of what we're going to do, I'm going to add some garlic and onion powder. got the herbs and seasonings right up here in my cabinet. That's garlic. If you want to add chopped garlic, chopped onions, you can do that instead. I like to add uh, turmeric because it's just, I'll try to add that in as many dishes as I can. It's good for inflammation. It's really good, especially you want to make sure you're using turmeric if you have black pepper or grease, which we do. So, because those all work together for the body. And also, and this is just me, I won't put the turmeric in the recipe, but I just like to add it when I can. And it adds kind of an orange tinge to the food and that won't matter in a tomato product because it's already going to be red. Alright, get my, you know the onion powder always sticks because of the, that's because of the sugar. And so I've done garlic, onion, oh the tomato, um, not tomato, the Italian seasoning. Remember to rub your seasonings between your hands to release the flavor. And that's a generous tablespoon. And I have a recipe for this in my cookbook, my first cookbook, and on here on YouTube. Okay, looks like it's done. It's brown. There you go. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about a half a cup, or I am going to add half a cup of um, broth. Now, I would eyeball this, but for your sake, since today I am um, going to take this off so we can get the grease on top, the good, good fat, I'm going to do this just so I, you know, don't make a mess on the video. <laughs> But normally I would just guess. Okay, so I'm going to add half a cup of the broth right now. And that's going to kind of deglaze the uh, pan if there's anything stuck, which there's not. Okay. Alright, I'm actually going to turn the Instant Pot off for a minute. Because I have to change the setting in a few minutes anyway. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add... Pasta sauce. I'm going to dump it all in there. I'm going to put the rest of this broth in there because I'm going to, you guessed it, rinse it out. Waste nothing, right? This broth is going to add some flavor, but you can use water successfully because this is actually the first time I've used broth. I've always just used, um, you know, water. Eight ounces of pasta. This dream fills is a 13 and a fourth. So what I'm going to do is guesstimate. So let's see, that'd be almost seven. So I have to talk myself through this. So basically, I'm just going to grab, let's see, I need eight. So half is going to be, let's see, help me, almost seven. So a little over half. And that is how I cook. <laughs> a little over half. 
of the box. You might want to be more exact. And what you do, what I do is, yeah, I think that's good. That's a little over half. What I do is I'm going to break it up and kind of crisscross it. You don't want to just drop it in one clump. And you do want to make sure it's all covered. Actually, this is easier to break than spaghetti because it's, you know, flat. You don't stir it. I don't want to give you the impression that I'm stirring because I'm not. All right, what I have done, again, I have put the rest of this pasta or, or this broth in here. I'm covering this. And I'm simply making sure that it's all covered but I'm not stirring. I'm just kind of making sure all the pasta, you know, is, is covered with a liquid, but I'm not stirring. Okay? Let me wipe my hands off. All right. You hear that noise? Turn it to sealing. Turn it to pressure cook. And then eight minutes. There you go. And that's it. Okay? Now, you can put... Turn the keep warm off or you can leave it on, but either way, you're going to be opening it uh, when the time is finished and you're going to be releasing the pressure manually. So we'll talk about that when it happens. And it's going to take roughly 10, 12 minutes to get up to pressure. So let's just call it 12 plus your eight, min eight minutes of cooking. So in 20 minutes plus your time that you cooked the meat and did all that, so less than 30 minutes you have your spaghetti. And we'll see what it looks like when it comes out of the um, instant pot. Will it be cooked? Will it be thick? We'll find out. We're, we're finished cooking. So I'm going to just grab a towel and we're going to reduce this pressure uh, manually, meaning we're not going to let it reduce on its own we're going to flip this button up here, the little lever there, um, to where it says venting, and we're going to let it um, vent. This is gonna keep the noodles from getting soggy, because if you, uh, they could get soggy if you let it um, naturally depressurize. I was going to tell you the noise on the other side of the wall is some bathroom construction that we have going on. Mr. Patient has going on. Bless his heart. Something he didn't want to get into. But there he is. Okay, now the little valve there has gone down, so we are good to open it. So let's see. Come on. All right, here we go. That took approximately two minutes or so to... Hear that little song? All right. Let's see. Can you see it? Maybe I need to bring you in closer because I'm happy about this recipe. All right. Look at here. Okay, now. Let's look at it. Nothing soggy. Now it is, I have had it to where, um, you know, it's a little bit, uh, well, I don't want to use the word runny, but y'all know what I'm talking about, liquidy before, and where it was on the stiff side as well. And that's just, that's just because I just don't use a recipe. <laughs> but look here, this is going to be great. Stir it up. Don't have uncooked noodles. You don't have chunks of noodles. They're all evenly distributed. It's best to serve this immediately. But, you know, if you can't, just do the best you can. I'm not going to put it on keep warm. I'm actually going to hit cancel because I'm a little bit nervous that if I don't, it's going to, um, you know, get soggy. So that's it. I'm actually not going to taste it because it is super, super hot. But I can tell you that that is a delicious, delicious recipe to make. Um, I'm just going to count. Uh, there. 
I'm just going to let it sit there. It's on off, but it will stay hot for a little while until my, Mr. Patient is through with his work in the bathroom. But like I was saying, and I'm hot because I'm in here cooking. <laughs> like I was saying, this is a great recipe for um, supper time. Uh, easy if you don't have time to cook something else or if you don't have an available oven or stove because you're using it for canning or something. So try this recipe. Go to my website. Oh, printable link down below in the description box. It'll take you to the website and that's where you'll see a printable recipe to put in your homekeeping book that I hope that you are making. So whoo, it's hot in this kitchen, but we're being productive. And until next time, y'all make sure you count your blessings. There's always plenty to be thankful for. See you next time. Bye-bye. My bonus thing that I do is this. I just dump some cream cheese and I can't do it with one hand because I'm holding the camera. Cream cheese, put it in there, it'll melt, just make it creamy. I'm just gonna go ahead and shut this, but I'll stir it right before I serve it. This is optional. You can also add some cream, like, you know, whipping cream, raw cream, whole cream, and it just makes it creamy. It makes kind of like a vodka sauce on, or a rose, sorry, excuse me. Yummy. so hot. It's gonna burn my mouth. It's gonna be good though. Good.